Hello again, everyone. I'm Kimonas Otirjos, and I'm one of the tech leads of Kuplos Notebooks Working Group. Today, I'd like to walk you around a brand new UI we have for Kuplos 1.3, which is all about managing your data and your persistent volume claims. So, one of, while we were revisiting the user experience around managing notebooks on top of Kuplos, we we quickly realized that. In the notebooks form, you are you can really easily create a new notebook and at the same time also create a new persistent volume alongside the, the notebook. While this is a great from a user's perspective because it makes it really simple to create a new volume alongside a new notebook without requiring any terminal at all or, or kubectl commands, at the, same, at the same time, this has the, the main disadvantage that once the notebook is deleted, then all of these persistent volume claims just are left there to in the cluster. So someone will then need to log into the cluster and use kubectl to manage these volumes, which is against our original goal of making Kubeflow a platform that requires no use of Kubernetes tools from the, from the end users. So after taking users feedback and this into consideration we we want to we're happy to present you a new web app that we've been working on that will be part of kubeflow 1.3 release and it's about managing these pvcs on top of kubeflow so this is the first iteration of the ui and it's a really simple one and as you can see it allows you to do three main things right now the first is to quickly view all of the available volumes in the specific namespace. So you can quickly take a look and understand what data lives in, the, in this namespace and from what users. You can also very easily try and delete a persistent volume. And of course, you can very easily create a new persistent volume claim. You can type the name like my data. You can, you can pick the size of the volume, how many, how big it's going to be. The storage class, it can be it can have a non-storage class or any star class of the of your preference. By default, the default storage class is the default class of the cluster. So this is why this one was pre-selected. Let's pick another one. And you can of course select the um, the access mode of the volume. Should only should be accessible from one node, from many, from read from many. So let's keep the default here and create a test volume. So as we can see, our volume was just created and it's ready to be to be utilized. So can, just to make, to make a end-to-end -end demo, let's go and create a first notebook server, test data, in which I, I'm going to use the my data volume. And as you can see, the UI figured out that the a volume already exists and it's going to use this one for my workspace volume. So I can just hit create. And the notebook is, has start, is, is, is starting to get initialized. It's ready to go. And as we can see, it's using the volume, our volume. So this is a quick uh, overview of this volume UI. As we said again, this is a first iteration. And while it will, it will allow some, some ease of use from end users to manage their volumes, there are still some some pain points that we would like to that we're going to iterate from 1.3 and onwards. And the first thing that we would like to do is to actually include one more column over here, in which the users will be able to see from which pods these volumes are being mounted in. So once I see a volume, I can quickly understand that from which notebooks this volume is get, is is used from. So I can very quickly understand, and uh, this will also help me to. Be, feel safe about deleting volumes and not worry about, hey, is this, is this volume you already used from a notebook? Another thing that we would really also like to improve is the ability to edit the entire YAML of the, uh, of the object before it gets submitted. This is a recurrent theme that you're going to keep hearing me talking about because in Kubeflow from 1.3, and forward, we really want to give more advanced users the ability to be able to tune their, their objects as much as they could, while at the same time, providing them with some sane defaults and a nice user experience. So 
we should definitely have an option to edit the volume before it gets submitted. So an advanced user could, for example, modify the metadata, uh, the labels or the annotations of the volume. So this is a first look of the UI. All these, these are the ideas that we think that would make it look even better. But as always, we would really, really like to hear your feedback as well on what you think and what you would like us to improve on this UI. If you'd like to chat more about this UI, feel free to open a new issue on Cuplo Cuplo or join our Notebooks Workgroup meetings and we can discuss more there.